Well, hello and welcome to the This Awesome Life podcast, a podcast where we celebrate stories that point to purpose and search those stories to find what God might be teaching us through them. Each week we have a conversation with a friend and learn a little bit about who they are and how their stories have shaped them into who they are continuing to become. Today on the podcast, I have a good friend of mine named Steve Murphy, and Steve is awesome. I can't wait for you guys to hear this conversation that Steve and I had about patience ugh, and being grace forward when we have those situations that test our patience. So let's jump in and see what we can learn today as we live this awesome life. Hey, today on the podcast, I've got my good friend, Steve Murphy. Steve's the producer of the Nook podcast, a brilliant video editor, and the owner of one of the best goatees I've seen in quite some time. (laughs) (laughs) Steve, I'm really glad you're here, man. How are you doing today? Bro, I don't know if I could start with a higher compliment than that, that you- Just the goatee one, or? You recognize, yes, that we're gonna have to go with the goat. It's it's a statement piece now. It's a a conversation starter, and you recognize that. Well, normally they say game recognizes game, but sometimes it's just sheer. <laughs> I I don't have that level of game, and so I recognize it. Because yeah, but it as is... long as you're aspiring for better game, I think you're that's always fair. you're always moving forward. That's Man, fair. Did that sound way like better... wise or something? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit, yeah. I did have way better beard game at one point, but then uh, my wife kind of ended it for me. So that was that was good. Not for I did it. I, you know, I, I, she didn't like sneak up on me with the clippers or anything. Right. That would have been way Attack cooler. Attack you in but, your sleep. Yeah, but it was more of like, woke a, up like hey, this can one we day. deal with this? Yeah, I woke up like this. Anywho. <laughs> well, hey, man. Um, like I said, I'm glad you're here. I've been wrestling with uh, purpose a lot lately, with this idea of purpose. And mm-hmm. I think that a lot of times in, in our lives, in this world and stuff like that, we've, we've overly mystified the idea of purpose. And it's I'll like, it has that. to be this super, super niche thing. Like my purpose is to help people who weigh 179 pounds, lose their last three pounds to get down to 176 pounds while wearing red shoes in the gym. Right. Like that's, it's too much. Right. And so my belief is that uh, that purpose is way simpler than that. And it's more about like just loving God and loving other people mm. and all of our stories. If we look back at our lives and back at our stories, those are the things, those are the tools that help us figure out what our purpose is, or better yet, how to live out our specific purpose, right? And so one of the things I love to do is just explore random stories and figure out what we can learn about each other, what we can learn about God, and what we can learn about our purpose in those stories. So, Steve, I would love to hear one of your stories that has helped shape you or helped uh, guide you towards your purpose. Okay. Uh, I feel like I need to preface this story with a couple of little caveats. One Uh being, uh, I have been driving, I just, I don't know why it hit me recently, but I've been driving for 40 years now, and that's that's because I'm old. I've been living for 40 years now. See, I've been driving as long as the host of this podcast (laughs) has been alive. (laughs) Am I old? Yes. Uh, And secondly, I'm very, I'm a very punctual person (laughs) now. With some insight that I was actually late for this recording, so that's ironic. Mm. Um, So within my driving, I have, and I don't know how far back this part goes, but I have terrible road rage. And it's everything about my drive. And and I have a four-mile commute to my job, and yet I can find myself so angry and bitter in that four miles. But it just And I bet you're the only one. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, there's times you say that. I, I There's mornings that I just feel like I'm the only one that had to pass a driver's test. Ah, uh, that's fair. And everybody else has somehow lost their mind, and they're all out <laughs> to get me. This is the, this is the narrative yes. in my head. So uh, a couple years ago, and the, uh, the funny thing is I have no idea where I was going. I just know I needed to get there. And I was probably, well, I, I wasn't going to be late. But I'm driving on a two-lane road, and there's this car in front of me that it it started to feel comical how this yes. car was going to stay in front of me. And I'd get over to the right lane, and the car would go over to the right lane. And that's like, oh. Right. Then I go back over to the left lane. They'd come back over to the left lane. And when it happens two or three times like that, that's when I'm convinced. This is not coincidence now. This oh, person no. is actively trying to stop me from where I'm going. And I can just feel the 
the anger and I'm white knuckling my steering wheel because I'm just angry now yeah. because this person is impeding my progress. On so, purpose. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so another couple of minutes goes by and the way that the traffic around us had shuffled enough to where I could make a quick move over to the right lane and get up far enough to where this car could not get in front of me again. And now it's victorious. Right. And you can't just let those moments buy. You got to go by slowly and you got to look over to see you what gotta. sort of terrible human is at the wheel of this car that has got such a bend against me to keep me from where right. I'm going. And as I come up to where I can finally see through the passenger window, it's a young woman and she looks to be about the age of my oldest daughter. And she is sobbing like ugly snot and tears, oh, no. sobbing, just leaning forward, holding on to the wheel. And it was such a moment of, oh, my gosh, are you kidding me? I have vilified this woman thinking that she is just messing with me and I don't even need to know one word of her story to see that she very well could have been living in the middle of her worst day. And here I am angry that she was holding me up at one o'clock on a random Tuesday or something like that. Yeah. And I honestly feel like in that moment, at the risk of churching it up, there was a conviction about the way I drive and how Mm. angry I tend to get even at the silliest of things that that God I don't know I, I feel like God probably deals with everybody so uniquely one of the things I love about him yeah that he showed me myself in in that moment and didn't even really have to say much just kind of like you know did, did you catch your attitude in all yeah. of this and now how do you feel Put yourself in this woman's place if if the, if you can. Yeah, we've all had that worst day. We've all had that really cruddy day that you you wondered if you're even going to make it through because something so devastating has happened. And there's that old saying that I'll probably botch the quote. It's just like be careful about how you deal with people because everybody is fighting some kind of a battle. Yeah, that comes yeah. full face right in front of my yeah. eyes Oof. and to me it was it, it stood as a reminder that I, you know i need grace by the truckload but i am yeah. so stingy with doling it out and yeah. that's something I, I know i can't i can't live like that that's that goes yeah. so counter to the faith that i claim to have and the jesus that i claim to follow that's that goes counter to his whole gig yeah. and it's something that i have to I, i'm running late the irony of that to get here to talk to you <laughs> and i'm yelling yelling at the guy in yeah. front of me dude yeah. if you're going to make the left get in the left hand turn lane so i yeah. can blow by you don't yes. you understand? I'm late to talk to Brandon. <laughs> yeah. So that's the so the follow up question of of something like that is normally so how are you doing with that now? And you know it's <laughs> it's <laughs> but isn't still that, a struggle? Yeah, absolutely. Isn't that how God works sometimes? Though it's like I'm getting ready to go talk about this thing. Yes. And I'm going to be the least qualified person to yes. talk about this thing. I feel like you know I I have the regular privilege of of. Uh, preaching and teaching, and I feel like every time I get ready to, to deliver a sermon or deliver a message, I have my biggest struggle with that thing five minutes before. Oh, yeah. You know? Isn't that almost like a strange confirmation, though? Uh, yeah, it is. It, it, you know, you have to be able to get, get there with your, with your brain, with your mind. You know, it's like, it, yes, it is, because you get to stand up and say, like, I'm, I'm not preaching at you. I'm learning with you. Yeah. And uh, it's so hard to do that sometimes because you you step up there and you feel like you feel like a fake or yes. you know like oh who am I to be talking about this or something like that you know um, I still struggle with that and I I think for me the the 
the the funniest one of those situations, like you're talking about with road rage, is you finally get around and you go to make the eye contact and you look over and it's like somebody that you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, like, and trust me again, because I, I've got only a four mile commute and yeah. I'm I've done pretty good. I'm I'm good at keeping my fingers to myself. Sure. And part of that is because <laughs> I could very well be next to somebody who is going to the same place where I work. And that right. that stays in at least in the back of my head that the last thing I yes. want to do is get snarly with somebody and then have to pull into the parking lot with them a half right. a mile later. Oh, that yes. was you. I I would be I would be mortified. If, well, that's if when that you get to happened. really, that's when you really get to test out the uh, biblical conflict resolution. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, uh, the amazing practice of apologizing, yes. throwing up all yes. over yourself with apologies. Right. You get to start with, uh, are we going to be able to work this out or should we just walk straight in and find right. faster? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go right to HR. I, I, yeah, no kidding. I, you can handcuff me. It's all my fault. Yeah. Good stuff. Steve, how could you keep that like lesson, I guess, in front of you? And, you know, I, I think one of the things that you said was so good was I need grace by the truckload, but I'm so stingy with doling it out. Like how and how do you keep a grace forward mindset, especially in those moments where you know that you're you're going to get frustrated or annoyed? Oh, I wish I had a magic formula for you. I wish I had three points. If you just do these three things, then then it works yeah. itself out. To me, that is one of those, it's a daily thing. It's a daily reminder. It's that daily um, crucifying the flesh. And I, I don't yeah. say that haphazardly because I know that's what I have to do. And, and the truth is, is that <laughs> I accuse people. You'll, maybe you'll find this funny now that it just occurred to me. The way people drive grocery carts, I, I think, is a, 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 a very much a reflection in how they drive cars. Yes, I would agree so with that 100%. So I find similar frustrations in those situations where I will dive into my own dumb narrative. Now it's the lady with the cart in front of me that's got an axe to grind. Mm -hmm. And I, no joke, I feel like it's just been something in the last year where it's like, God, I just give me some empathy. Give me... Give me that ability to think the best because I'm yeah. sorely lacking there. Mm. Go back to the girl in the car. Here I am thinking the worst about this woman, the worst that could possibly be. And yet, why didn't I have the thought, ah, maybe that guy's just having a bad day. Maybe this, wh whoever's driving that car, you don't know where they're coming from. They, they could have just yeah. come from a funeral. They could have just come from a hospice. Uh, yeah, you know, there's any, any number of things and I don't ever want to feel the way that I felt looking over at that. Yeah. Well, she didn't, she didn't make eye contact. It was like all, she was doing all she could to keep her car on the road that day. Yeah. And, um, having to absolutely choose grace, choose, yeah. um, to, to think the best or at least ponder it. Maybe maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they, they the guy just spilled coffee. It, it, you know anything because because yeah. you you know it happens to yourself yeah. when yeah. you're off, and yet you yeah. have no idea who who might be judging you or misjudging you. You don't know, yeah. and I I it's it's just something that I have to be conscious of, and sometimes that's just really hard. It's so hard. And it's, it's funny to me, like we know we're aware, right? We're aware of these situations. We're aware of the things that, that get us in that space where we, we don't have the grace and yet we don't, we still don't always prepare ourselves to enter into them. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I, I do like a five minute warning every night before dinner, you know, like for my family, cause I <laughs> wow. cook and they're everywhere else. And so I'm like, all right guys, five minutes, because I like when dinner's ready, I want to sit down and eat it. I don't want to eat my food cold. It's Same. ready. They've done nothing to contribute to this meal. All I need them to do is come sit at the table, right? And yeah, yet one it's job. one job, one job. And it's like, you know, I just, I can't get them to do it. And so every night at dinner time, the, the five minute warning started because I was so frustrated 
with the situation and that made it better. But now they're just like, oh, I got five more minutes to do nothing. Right. Um, so now I've started doing like <laughs> 10 minutes, five minutes, <laughs> you know, and be like, hey, don't forget, here's the checklist of things you're supposed to do. Number one, <laughs> sit at the table. That's the list. Um, and so yet, yet I still find myself getting super frustrated with it. Now on the other side, I, um, I went to my mom's house one year for Christmas and it was my family, uh, my sister's family who they've got four kids and then uh, my mom and some other family members. There's like 12 people in this house that is made for one right. <laughs> and it's loud and it's crazy. And my natural inclination in that scenario is to just lose my mind. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I knew the situation that I was walking into and I actively like prepared myself for it. And on the other side, my wife is looking at me like, how did you, how did you do that? How'd you stay so patient <laughs> through that whole thing? And I don't uh, even know you right now. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Unfortunately, that's a, that's a, an outlier yes. in those scenarios, but it's like one success story, you know, <laughs> like we all have them. Yep. And, and, but it's so funny to like, look and see, look back at that story and realize like, oh, when I know, when I prepare myself for hard things, I can do hard things. Yep. When I prepare myself to walk through a situation that's uncomfortable, I can do it. The end, never think about it again. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Oh, yeah. We're, we're all too, to... all too, uh, it's all too easy to, f to fail again and forget yeah. what happened. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like, you know, the, like, it's the, the people, you know, there's bread dropping from the sky to feed you. I was literally and just the next talking day, about this a little while ago. Man, what are we going to do? We're going to be hungry and die. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> he showed up before. Why yeah. are you questioning it today? Right. Right. And I, yeah, I, I don't know how to how to do that. Right. Like there's so many stories that that story, the people of Israel over and over and over again wasn't isolated to just wandering in the desert. Mm. Like that was their whole life, forgetting who God was yes. and then ending up in this miserable situation because of it. Yep. And then being like, you remember that God guy that loves us and cares for us? We should we should talk to him. Yeah. And he's like, oh, finally. And they're like, okay, thanks for that. Uh, we're just going to go back and do the same <laughs> exact thing that we just did. Yeah. <laughs> All um, right, start and over. <laughs> it, and it's so easy to judge those guys, and here we are talking about how we're the same. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Well, and it's just so, that, that, that strange reminder. It's like there's there's nothing new. There truly is yeah. nothing new. That to no. me is why why I think that's why God stresses that he is the same yesterday and today and forever. Because yeah. we have this brutal selective amnesia problem that we need to be reminded how, how easy it yeah. is for us to shift good or bad. Yeah. And yet he stays. He's yeah. always constant. It's so funny because it's not like we don't understand what it's like to be on the other side of that. Yeah. You oh, know? exactly. It's not like we don't understand what it's like to need grace ourselves. And so we're so quick. I've said it out loud. Like, hey, give me a little bit of grace. You know, we, yeah. we say it, but we don't quickly give it. Oh, you know? sure. And even when somebody, yeah, if somebody says, hey, can you give me a little grace? You're like, well, are you sure you deserve it? <laughs> you know? Yeah, prove anyway, it for me. Because it, right. going back to another the highway type thing is it's amazing yeah. to me that if you see flashing lights behind you you begin your it activates your deodorant and you begin oh man please just let me off of the warning just let me off of the warning yeah. be, please be, be going after somebody else be respectful <laughs> be nice be sorry and maybe he'll just let you off but man when that guy goes flying around you and you see him pulled over a mile ahead <laughs> Yeah. yeah, get him. Yep. No, man. Take I've... that, speedy boy. Yeah. Where are you going to in such a hurry? Yeah. Hey, bro, and we all got key, places for... to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> low key. Thanks for getting him off the road so that yeah. I can speed now. <laughs> Clear the way for me. Here. Yeah. Man, that's uh, that's so good. Uh, you know, great thoughts. Really good challenge. Really good challenge, honestly, for me. I'm, I'm riding the boat with you when it comes to road rage. Like, that's number one. Um, <laughs> I think it goes... I can get so frustrated in the car so fast and, and just, it's such a good reminder to, to be grace forward, you know? Yeah. Lead, lead I like the way grace. you're putting that. Um, grace forward is a really good, uh, that's good framework. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Well, man, uh, thank you so much for being here. Like Steve, you're one of my all time favorites. One of those, one of those guys that I can talk to after five years and, 
feel like yeah. it's just been yesterday, Pick you know, right where we left uh, off. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So, man, I appreciate you and all the, all the, you know, mentorship you've given me over the years, uh, video stuff, podcast stuff now is the new thing that, um, man, you're just one of those guys that genuinely loves to, to serve and support people. And I appreciate uh, you being with me today. Ah, oh, dude, it's an absolute honor. Thanks for asking me. Yeah, man. Maybe we'll do it again. Maybe. Maybe. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of This Awesome Life Podcast. Hey, maybe you're like Steve or myself and you really have a hard time with patience when it comes to things like driving a car or pushing a grocery store cart. I know I do on a regular basis, and I've found that when I can prepare myself for those hard times, I'm actually more successful in being patient. This is something I've got to keep at the forefront of my mind anytime I know I'm walking into one of those situations. If I'm driving home from work during heavy traffic, or if I'm going to the grocery store on a Sunday afternoon along with every other person in my entire city, I know that I'm going to need extra measures of grace and extra measures of patience. What's that for you? Is it road rage or is it something else? Uh, Maybe it's just being at home with the kids or maybe there's a hard uh, personality that you work with that you struggle to be patient with when they need uh, extra help or, or some grace. What causes you to, to lose your patience or to have a hard time showing it or showing grace to other people. I hope that together we can be the kind of people that work on ourselves and work really hard to show others the love uh, that God has shown to us. And one of the ways that we do that is by giving grace and by having patience for other people. I know for me, uh, it takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of practice, and it's something that I miss the mark on on a regular basis. But I know that God is faithful to continue and complete the work that he started in me. He wants me to be patient. He wants me to be grace-forward and grace-filled. And he's going to continue to show me ways that I can grow in those areas. And the same is true for you. So, want to have an awesome life? Let's figure out how to be a people that are grace-forward and have just incredible amounts of patience. Thanks so much for being here with us today. If you want to get connected to This Awesome Life in other ways, check the show notes so that you can subscribe to the This Awesome Life blog. It's one of my favorite things that I do. I'd love to have you join me over there. Check out those stories. Uh, hit me up in the comments. I love to interact with people that are reading that. Uh, if you want to connect with me in other ways, all my socials are in the show notes, and I'd love to see you over there as well. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of This Awesome Life.